Today we are going underwater to see where those summer bass are hanging out. Conditions are always changing and as anglers we understand that. And most of the time we're talking about natural conditions, weather changes. Well, sometimes conditions change because of things that humans do to our lakes and rivers. And that's what I want to talk about today. The body of water that I fish most of the time usually has an excellent stand of aquatic vegetation. Well, weed control has taken place in the last few weeks. Lake management has come in and there are hardly any weed beds left whatsoever. Well, what did that do? it repositioned the bass that normally hang out in these really thick weed beds and they're all scattered and went to different locations. So today we spent several hours underwater looking for bass. Where did the small fish go? Where did the big fish go? So let's jump right into it. Now as you can see the only real decent cover is shallow. Look at all of this dead vegetation and then we even probe the depths for a long time and there's just a lot of nothing. Almost reminds me of looking at a moonscape. I was really trying to locate some schools of bigger fish, those four, five, six pounders down in the depths couldn't do it. I will definitely get the camera back out there and do some more looking, but today the only activity that we could find was shallow. Now if you notice, I showed you just a second ago that there's all kinds of dead and decaying vegetation and the bass, the bluegills, the life has moved off of it. But if you notice here, there's a new stand of vegetation just starting. It's really, really short. It's in small patches, but it's green. And if you look at the schools of the bass that we found, they are definitely relating to this vegetation. Now they're down here tight on the bottom. They're not suspending up over it and they really can't get in it that well and hide, but they were definitely relating to this. So in this particular conditions I've got here, finding the freshest and most recent growth is where we were able to locate the fish of all species. We were also able to locate some bass and fish that were hanging near brush. And also, if you take a look here, you can tell that we were really close to the shade of a great big floating dock. So these two types of cover were holding fish as well, but that fresh vegetation seemed to be the real ticket. Now, as far as a boat dock, take a look at this. So this was another suspending boat dock that we were on, and there was a couple bass hanging out here. Look at this particular fish. There's really not a whole lot of cover here, but this bass swims around this ladder and then positions on the rung of the ladder. I'll go ahead and freeze it right here so you can see it. Look at this fish. It is laying perfectly in line or parallel with the rung of the ladder. I find this very fascinating. So as anglers, how can we use this? Well, if we were flipping and pitching this particular dock, think about this. How close do you need to have that jig or that soft plastic to this ladder to get that fish to react to it to bite? What about the rate of fall? Do we need a super, super slow rate of fall? Or is it going to be better with a plastic that is just shooting right by that fish and as it comes by, it jumps off the rung of that ladder and follows it down or eats it? So this is really critical information as an angler. It is impossible to get too close to the cover that we are fishing even in clear water situations. I've found this so insightful and so informative and I'm glad we were able to show it to you. Now take a look at this here. So we are back at that small patch of very green and fresh vegetation. And if you look in the distance, there were several times where we caught bass feeding on something down there in the bottom. And they are literally rooting through that vegetation to get to whatever it is that is there. Now when we are actually filming, it is very difficult to see that kind of detail when we're filming on our phones 
connected to the camera. I didn't really see this till we got it back in studio, but they are coming to this same exact location multiple times. So like I said, I'm not 100% sure what they are feeding on. I wish I would have noticed it as we were filming so we could have got the camera right there to look at it. But in one of these shots, it looks like there's three bass all feeding in the same exact spot and they're really digging around in the vegetation. So once again, that tells us as anglers, even if our Texas rigs, our Ned rigs, if it looks lifelike, if it looks natural, and those fish want it, they're gonna go get it. The other thing that I really wanna point out is we've talked through many videos this year that especially in the summertime, the bass will get in groups, they will get in schools. We found some really nice sized schools of fish today but they were most definitely grouped up by year class. So if you take a look at this, this small school here, these are pretty tiny bass, but they're all about that same size, which leads me to believe they were probably from that same year or that same class of a spawn. Then if you take a look at this school of fish, they are much bigger. Now, sometimes it's hard to tell uh, with the camera underwater, but I'm guessing that a lot of these were in that pound and a half to two pounds range, and, and they're almost all bookends. They're that same size fish. So in our videos, we've talked about when, when you catch a two pounder, especially in the summer, just don't take it off the hook and shoot on down the bank. Stay right there, work that area over. As a matter of fact, in one frame of the sequence, I counted nine bass right there within a super small area. So these are the types of situations where if you're working down the bank and you're carrying and you keep your distance, you might catch four or five or six out of that group of fish or you and your partners double up or triple up all at the same time. So even though it may be a pound and a half fish or two pounder, just don't you know, dismiss it. Go ahead and work that area over carefully. You never know how many are down there. And this particular lake is only 180 acres. It's not that big. So if you're on a bigger, better fishery, this school may have been 40 or 52 pounders. You just don't know. So what are some of the key things that we really learned today? One is we just reinforce the fact that it does not take much cover to hold a bass. As a matter of fact, it can be the tiniest stick, the smallest piece of vegetation, one rung on a ladder, and that's all it takes to hold a fish, especially for some reason, if there's very little cover or sparse cover in a body of water, don't dismiss those tiny, tiny little places as you're going down the shoreline. See that one tiny little stump? You never know, it could have a really, really good fish sitting on it. Hey, if you wanna check out a video on the five lures that I really depend on for my summer bass fishing, go ahead and check this one out right here. And don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.